Hello dear students, welcome to a lecture on innate immune responses and role of monocytes, neutrophils, macrophages and natural killer cells in innate response. In today's deliberation, we shall discuss first the concept of immunity, then we will try to understand difference between non-specific and specific defense mechanisms. We will also discuss the first line of defense and finally we will try to understand the second line of defense. First of all, let me give you a brief introduction about immunology and immunity. Immunology is the study of physiological defense by which the body recognizes itself from non-self. In the process, it destroys or neutralizes foreign matter both living and non-living. Immune defenses protect us against infection by microbes, viruses, bacteria, fungi and parasites, isolates or remove non-microbial foreign substances and destroy cancer cells that arise in the body, a function known as immune surveillance. Now regarding the concept of immunity. Concept of immunity grew out of observations that individuals who had recovered from certain infectious diseases were thereafter protected from the disease. Immunity is derived from a Latin word immunus means exempt. So immunity is the ability of an organism to resist infection by pathogens or state of protection against foreign organisms or substances. Immunity is also defined as the capability of body to resist harmful microorganisms or viruses from entering into it. Or we can say immunity is the ability of organisms to recognize the foreign material that enter the body and to mobilize the cell and the cell products to speedily remove that foreign material. Moving on, let us try to understand the development of immunity. A person may develop immunity in three ways. Immunity through diseases Response of an organism to the infection of a pathogenic organism varies through time. The first time he gets infection of a pathogen, he is likely to get disease. Subsequent infections of the same organism does not cause the disease. This occurs because in the first instance, antibody formation is slow. The virus has a time to multiply and spread throughout the body. Thus, disease appears. Eventually, antibody formation picks up and the disease disappears. The cells capable of producing antibodies persist in the body as memory cells for a long time, maybe for life after infection. They quickly become active on further infection and produce antibodies of same type. The antibodies rapidly overcome the infection fully. Hence, the disease does not appear again. This is the basis of the disease resistance or immunity. Duration of immunity Some diseases like smallpox, mumps, polio once caught produce lifetime immunity. For other diseases such as diphtheria, typhoid fever, immunity lasts for years, but not for life. Still some diseases like common cold, flu generates a short time immunity. Now coming to vaccination. Vaccination is a technique to develop immunity without infection. Weakened or dead pathogen or portion of pathogen are injected into person who is required to be made immune. The pathogens given in a vaccine are unable to cause the disease but are sufficient to stimulate formation of antibodies by the host immune system that recognizes the antigen. Thus, a vaccinated person develops immunity against the pathogens without contracting the disease. Today, vaccines are available against smallpox, polio, 
mumps and rabies. Often, two to three additional doses are needed to generate adequate immunity. These are called booster doses. Smallpox was the first disease to be eliminated by vaccination. It is also first disease to be officially declared wiped out by human efforts. Now coming to antitoxins. Antibodies that neutralize toxins produced in the body or introduced from outside are called antitoxins. Antitoxins are these days prepared artificially and used as a remedy for snake bite. Now let us highlight the types of immunity. There are two major types of immunity, innate or inborn and acquired or adaptive. Innate immune responses or non-specific defense mechanism. This mechanism is similar for most of infections, hence its name. It protects against foreign substances or cells without having to recognize their specific identities. The mechanisms of protection used by these defenses are not quite unique to the particular foreign substance or cell. It resists infection by blocking the entry of pathogens into the body or by destroying microbes through means other than antibodies. The non-specific immune mechanism is further of two types. First is the external line of defense and second is the internal line of defense. Now dear students, we will firstly try to understand first line of defense or external defense. The external defense comprises physical and chemical barriers to the entry of pathogens into the body. First, the physical barriers. Physical barriers form the first line of defense against microorganisms. It includes our skin and mucous membrane. Most of the organisms and foreign materials cannot cross the physical barrier but they can enter the body if the skin is damaged at some place. Secondly, the acidic pH of the sweat and sebaceous secretions and the presence of various fatty acids and hydrolytic enzymes like lysozymes inhibit the growth of most organisms. Some of the physical barriers are mucous membranes. These mucous membranes are present inside our digestive tract, inside our respiratory tract, urinogenital tracts. These mucous membranes resist the penetration of parasites into the tissues from gastrointestinal tract. Mucus also coats the microorganisms and dust particles that enters through nostrils into the respiratory tracts which later are flushed off with feces. Now coming to the skin. The skin provides a nice protective covering of the body. Its outer layer is called as stratum corneum, consisting of dead fully keratinized cells. These cells contain hard insoluble fibrous protein called keratin in a state of soft protoplasm. This hard layer is waterproof and successfully prevents the entry of viruses and bacteria. Now regarding chemical barriers. A variety of chemicals mediate protection against microbes during the period before adaptive immunity develops. The skin and mucous membrane also secrete certain chemicals which dispose of pathogens. Specific cases of this defense are skin secretions and bacteria. The oil and the sweat secreted by the sebaceous glands contain fatty acids and lactic acid which makes the skin surface acidic. This does not allow the microorganisms to establish on the skin. The skin harbors some friendly bacteria such as Staphylococcus epidermis which are adapted to its acidic environment. These bacteria release some acids and metabolic waste that check the growth of microbes. Thus, in this way, skin acts as defense against 
pathogens. Now coming to saliva. Saliva also contain the lysozymes which kill the microorganisms that are not the normal inhabitants of the buccal cavity and come with the food and drinks. The dead microbes are then passively flushed by saliva to the throat where they are swallowed. Now after that coming to bile. Bile is an alkaline secretion of the liver checks the growth of foreign bacteria in semi-digested food called chyme in the intestine. Now coming to tears. Tears are slightly saline fluid secreted by lacrimal glands or eyes also contain lysozyme which prevents eye infections. Tears also wash off the chemical irritants of polluted air from the eyes. Now dear students we will come to nasal secretions. Nasal secretions also destroy the harmful foreign germs with their lysozymes. Now coming to cerumen that is airwax. It is a brownish secretion from the ceruminous glands into the auditory canal traps dust and bacteria. It contains an effective antibacterial component. It also prevents entry of insects. Now vaginal bacteria. Certain bacteria normally live in the vagina. They produce lactic acid from glycogen of cells that periodically break off from the mucous membrane. Lactic acid kills the foreign bacteria and this provides best natural defense against infection. After understanding first line of defense, now we will understand the second line of defense that is internal defense or second line of defense. The immune system is defensing system in the host. Its second line consists of widely distributed cells, tissues and organs. These cells, tissues and organs recognize the foreign materials and then act to destroy them. The cells responsible for this immunity arise from pluripotent stem cells in bone marrow which divide to form two blood cell lineages. The lymphoid stem cells give rise to B and T cells and natural killer cells. The common myelinoid progenitor cells give rise to granulocytes, monocytes that give rise to macrophages and dendritic cells, megakaryocytes that produce platelets and the erythroblasts that produce RBCs. The activation of innate responses produce signals that stimulate and direct subsequent adaptive immune responses. So, white blood cells, macrophages, inflammatory reactions, fever, interferons, complement system and natural killer cells operate together to check damage to the body by pathogen. Often invaders are overcome and host recovers. Now dear students, let us discuss the different cells involved in inmate response in detail. First, white blood cells. These cells are most important from immunity point of view. Their number gets changed in infection and they creep out of the capillaries by amoeboid movements into the intercellular spaces. This process is called as diabdiasis. These are of two types, granulocytes and agranulocytes. They help in different ways. Firstly, coming to granulocytes. They have irregularly shaped nuclei with two to five lobes and are often called polymorphonuclear leukocytes. Their cytoplasmic matrix has granules that contain reactive substances that kill microorganisms and enhance inflammation. These include neutrophils. These cells form 60 to 70 percent of all leukocytes. Tissue damage by certain invading microbes release certain chemicals called chemokines which attract the neutrophils from the blood. 
movement of neutrophils towards source of chemical attractant is termed as chemotaxis. The neutrophils digest and engulf microorganisms infecting the body tissues. They are called phagocytes and the process is called phagocytosis. For phagocytosis, the cell membrane of a phagocyte invaginates and encloses a bacterium in a vacuole called phagosome without disrupting the cell surface. The vacuole then fuses with lysosome forming a phagolysosome in which the bacterium is digested by enzymes present in the lysosome. A neutrophil may engulf about 20 bacteria before it dies. Now coming to basophils. Basophils are the non-phagocytic cells that release histamine and heparin. Histamine plays an important role in the inflammatory reactions and heparins prevent clotting of blood in the blood vessels. This heparin acts as a protective device as it prevents heart attacks which may occur due to clot formation in the blood vessels. Now eosinophils. Eosinophils are the motile phagocytic cells that can migrate from blood to the tissue spaces. These cells provide the defense against parasites like parasitic worms. They get attached to the surface of parasitic organisms and discharge destructive enzymes. Now, mast cells. Mast cells contain many cytoplasmic granules that contain histamine and pharmacologically active substances. Mast cells together with the basophils play an important role in the development of allergies. Now coming to the second type of WBCs that are agranulocytes. Agranulocytes are leukocytes that lack granules in the cytoplasm. They have non-lobed, rounded or oval nucleus. They are also called as mononuclear cells. They have two subtypes, monocytes and lymphocytes. First coming to monocytes. Monocytes are motile and occasionally show phagocytic activity. Monocytes form about 5% of leukocyte but provide a more effective phagocytic defense. They circulate in the blood for only few hours then migrate into the tissues and change into macrophages. Macrophages are large, long-lived and very effective phagocytic cells that arise by enlargement of monocytes. A macrophage can engulf about 100 bacteria before it dies. Macrophages are of two types. First is the fixed one and second is the wandering. The wandering macrophages occur in the connective tissue throughout the body. They move to the site of infection and dispose microbes. Fixed macrophages are located permanently in certain organs. For example, lungs have alveolar macrophages. Liver has a cuffer cells. Renal glomeruli has mesoglial cells. They catch hold of the microbes and dead cells that are carried along in the blunt and the lymph and are trapped in the spleen and lymph nodes. The wandering and fixed macrophages together form the reticuloendothelial system. Now coming to lymphocytes. These lymphocytes are mononuclear leukocytes which constitute 20 to 40 percent of WBCs. They occur in large numbers in the blood and lymph and in lymphoid organs such as thymus, lymph nodes, spleen and appendix. Lymphocytes are mainly of three types B lymphocytes or B cells, T lymphocytes or T cells and natural killer cells. Now dear students, we come on to dendritic cells. 
These cells are bone marrow derived and are specialized for antigen presentation to helper T cells. Their main function is to process antigen material and present it on the cell surface to the T cells of the immune system. They act as messengers between the innate and adaptive immune systems. Dendritic cells are classified into four types. First type is the Langerhans cells. Second type is the interstitial dendritic cells. Third type is the myelinoid dendritic cells. And the fourth and the last one is the lymphoid dendritic cells. Each arise from the hemopoietic stem cells via different pathway and in different locations. They all express a high level of MHC class second molecules. They are more potent antigen presenting cells than macrophages and B cells. Both of them need to be activated before they can function as antigen presenting cells. Immature form of all these types occur antigen by phagocytosis. The antigen is processed and mature dendritic cell presents it to the helper T cell. Now coming to inflammatory reactions. Injury allows the foreign material to enter the tissues. Certain substances released by the damaged cells initiate the formation of blood clot. The clotting process checks the loss of blood. Inflammatory response is initiated by chemical signals. The invading microbes release some chemicals. Tissue injury causes basophils of blood and mast cells of connective tissue to release histamine. Chemicals from microbes and histamine together cause dilation of capillaries and small vessels surrounding the injury and increase the permeability of capillary wall. As a result, more blood flows through the area making it red and warm. Then fluid leaks out into tissue spaces causing oedema. This reaction of the body is called as inflammatory response and is a part of internal defense. And finally, the complement system. Complement is a heat liable component of blood plasma that enhances phagocytosis. It bridges the innate and adaptive immunity and removes immune complexes. This system is composed of over 30 serum proteins. Activation of the complement system in response to some microorganisms results in a controlled enzymatic cascade which targets the membrane of pathogenic organisms and leads to their destruction. So, in conclusion, we may say that immunity is the capability of a body to resist harmful microorganisms or viruses from entering it. This immunity is mainly of two types. First is the innate immune response and second is the adaptive. Innate immunity includes first and second line of defenses which work together with the adaptive immunity to destroy the foreign invaders or any sort of antigens which can elect an immune response. So friends, that was all about immunity, its types. And finally, we have understood the role of different types of cells in innate response. Hope you have understood and enjoyed the lecture. Thank you and goodbye.